This program is sponsored by Lanka Hospitals. Caring, curing. Hello everyone, welcome to Art Mediline. Art Television together with Lanka Hospitals bring you this program to make you aware of your health and well-being. Talking about Lanka Hospitals, they are the market leader in the healthcare industry, bringing you the best of medical services with the best of specialists in the country to all the Sri Lankans and also for the international representatives in the country. Now coming into today's program, we are going to talk about the advantages of MRI scanning. And to talk about this, we have Dr. Eranga Pereira, consultant radiologist with over 15 years of experience in the field. And she is a resident consultant radiologist at Lanka Hospitals with special interest to MRI scans. Hello, doctor. How are you? Nice Hello. to have you with us today for it's the program. Nice to be present in the program as well. Great. So let's begin the conversation with doctor. Give us a brief introduction about what is radiology. Yeah, uh, basically to start with what is radiology, it's, uh, it's actually helps a person, mm -hmm. a clinician to diagnose what the disease is. So if some person, a patient is sent to us like uh, to diagnose what the disease is, mm -hmm. you can use a lot of imaging methods. Mm -hmm. So the oldest method we used was the radiography, that's the x-rays and then came the ultrasound mm -hmm. and then the CT scanners and now we have the MRI and the PET scans and it goes on like that. Mm -hmm. So actually it's an imaging method to okay. see the inside of the body, what is wrong mm -hmm. and we help the clinician to make a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Right now, coming into today's topic on advantages of MRI scans, that's what we are talking about. So let's have a brief introduction about MRI scans, doctor. Yeah, that's actually my pet field also. All right. Right. Uh, so the main advantage of MRI is like uh, the it doesn't have radiation. So all the other investigations except ultrasound, mm -hmm. like we use the X-ray to make an image. Mm -hmm. MRIs uh, make the image using a magnetic field, mm -hmm. not the X-rays. Mm -hmm. So the main advantage is you can image anybody, mm -hmm. like a child, a pregnant mother, mm -hmm. and um, expecting a girl, mm -hmm. and uh, younger age population, whatever, you can image without a fear of radiation. Oh. And um, second is, like, uh, mainly you compare MRI with the CT scanner. That's mm -hmm. the competitor. Okay. So when you compare with the CT, CT has radiation, whereas MRI don't have radiation. Mm -hmm. other, other thing is, like, if you have the experience of ima uh, imaging a CT scanner, you know that there are only few images that you can get at once. Mm -hmm. But whereas if you go for a brain scan or whatever the body part you image in MRI, at one go you acquire a lot of images. Mm -hmm. That's the second advantage. So like that, um, whatever like um, the soft tissue, why, uh, we say the clarity of mm -hmm. an organ and uh, a soft tissue, is more enhanced in MRI than the CT. Mm -hmm. So those are the main advantages right, okay. in MRI scan. Okay, coming into that, let's also talk about the special features of MRI scan at Lanka Hospital's uh, radiology department. Yeah, we are actually proud to say that we have a three Tesla MRI scanner that is a higher magnetic field. Mm -hmm. Higher the magnetic field you use, higher the image quality. Okay. So we in Lanka Hospital have a, a three Tesla MRI scanner and uh, the image that you see now is uh, the MRI scanner that we have in uh, Sri Lanka Hospital. So we have a, a very wide bow mm -hmm. scanner. What do you mean by the wide bow is, if you look at the scanner now, you can see that there is a table-like thing mm -hmm. and around the gantry. Mm -hmm. So the patient lies on the table and for the imaging, you have to send the patient into the gantry, the hollow thing. Mm -hmm. So there are kind of patients that you are unable to go to a close place, what you call the claustrophobic patients. Mm -hmm. So we have a very wide gantry, like seven centimeters, mm -hmm. to reduce that, um, the patients feel better. Mm -hmm. And the other second one is we have a lot of uh, coils to image. What do you mean by coils are like, not 
you you have an MRI scanner that mm -hmm. would not give you images. Mm -hmm. So each part of the body is imaged through a coil. Mm -hmm. You need to have a separate coil for the head, separate coil for the shoulder, mm -hmm. and for the legs like that. So we have vast number of coils where you can image the whole body part by part. Mm -hmm. That's the second feature. Right, Doctor, um, what are the most common types of scans done through this MRI scanning? Uh, if I say like nowadays, mm -hmm. the most common scans are limited to the central nervous system, mm -hmm. that is the uh, neuro system. Mm -hmm. The common scans we do are the spines. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of <coughs> spine problems in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. From the childhood, the pediatric mm -hmm. age group to the young, and the old, we all need, uh, we spine all dishes. have backaches. Mm -hmm. We all have different kind of uh, diseases in the spine. Mm -hmm. So that is the most common uh, scan that we do. All right. And uh, the second most common is the brain. Mm -hmm. That is we commonly have the headaches now, types, different types of headaches, different, different types of diseases we have diagnosed, I mean, uh, recognized in the recent history. Mm -hmm. So. Spine and brain are the most commonest. Spine and the brain. Yeah. So if you take us through the process of the scanning for the spine, yeah. how does it happen, doctor? Yeah. So I will show you an image. Like spine also you can do, like if you want to image the spine at once, the whole spine. Mm -hmm. This is what you call the whole spine. Mm -hmm. You can image that as once. Okay. So uh, like I described you first, like you make the patient lie on the bed mm -hmm. and according to the need of the clinician, if they ask the whole spine, that we can image the whole spine. Or the um, pain or the pathology is limited to one uh, region, like in the neck mm -hmm. or the back, mm -hmm. the lower back, uh, separately we can do. Right. That's what I said, like when you, you have separate coils, uh, we can do separate as separate sections. Mm -hmm. Right. So is it the same process for the brain scanning, doctor, or is there any difference in the scanning uh, process? There are, is a difference, like uh, uh, spine, we do not intervene that much. Like you, you operate, but we don't interfere. Okay. Like in the brain, uh, with the new advances, mm -hmm. we also help the neurosurgeons to how uh, to operate, like what is the safest way to approach a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. The commonest thing the surgeons request us uh, is a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. Like when they go to the theater, uh, the new technique is the neuro navigation technique. Mm -hmm. That is the neurosurgeon navigate his path to the brain without damaging the rest of the uh, brain um, matter. Mm -hmm. So that we help through the diffusion technology. This is a separate technology. I will show you an image okay. uh, where you see all the, uh, the different pathways mm -hmm. that the nerves are sent through the brain. So you avoid those pathways and you try to reach the brain tumor without the minimum damage to the residual tissue. So if you can just Explain a bit on this diffusion part, doctor. Yeah. How does that happen? So, uh, again, I will uh, show you the image that will be, uh, yeah. Uh, so, you can see different colors mm -hmm. in the brain and they are in lines. Right. So, our brain is actually a network mm -hmm. which is connected, interconnected. Yes. And it has separate sections like to hands, to mm -hmm. legs, and to smell and vision. So these uh, lines show you each uh, senses how they are traveling. Mm -hmm. So the green would be from the front, like from the hands to the legs. Mm -hmm. And the red would be from one side to the other side, coordination. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a new advanced technique that you use in the MRI mm -hmm. to depict the diffusion tracks. We call them diffusion tracks. Actually, they are the nervous pathways. Mm -hmm. So the neurosurgeon knows which is how to cut the tumor and to take it out without damaging the rest of the uh, pathways. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sure that is the wonder in of, medical yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the industry these days where you do not really damage any part of especially brain I'm sure yeah. it is a very sensitive part and of the human and it doesn't regenerate if it is damaged it is forever right so you have to be very careful when you handle, handle. yeah that's why we say doctors do wonders so along with that doctor I would like to ask you, you know how long will this process actually take let's say spine or a brain scanning yeah, what is the time that's a duration good question. Uh, the um, shortest like in uh, mri like the shortest scanning time would be like 20 minutes okay. because it's a lengthy lengthy like the acquisition of the images it takes a long time right okay. so usually compared to other scanning techniques like imaging techniques mri is a lengthy study okay so the shortest is 20 minutes. So yeah. for 20 minutes, the patient will be inside, inside this yeah, scanner. Yeah. Right. Longest, if you just take Longest an example. Longest we do is uh, one hour. What kind of a scan would that be? <laughs> <laughs> that is, we check actually the function of the brain. Right. So we need to coordinate with the patient. We okay. educate the patient to raise one hand and we try to see the signals. We try to acquire the signals from right hand where it is uh, lighting like a bulb in the scan so okay. for that procedure we need coordination with the patient and we give time to the machine to acquire images right. so it takes a little bit time okay have you had experiences where patients have got really panicked or they've got yeah. scared so uh, usually uh, we all we are all like in a time like that we all get excited it yeah. takes yeah it takes time to make them calm make yeah. them understand then like I'm sure machine. being inside a scanner for one hour. Yeah, we try to keep a bystander like one of their ah, relatives. Right. Okay. Like if the scan is taking too long, we try to keep somebody next to them mm -hmm. holding the hand mm -hmm. so they know that there's somebody there. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we day to day like we have certain cases where they couldn't tolerate it at all. Yeah. There are times that we have to use uh, general anesthesia to mm -hmm. perform the scan to calm down the patient. Right. But there's actually nothing to be worried about. Nothing no, doctor, to be worried yes. about. Mm -hmm. Only that we, in a time like that, we all are like uh, under the stress. Yeah, we have to calm ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now you said um, you will let one of the relatives hold their hand. Yeah. So in such a, let's say, a brain scanning mm -hmm. process, only mm -hmm. the upper part of the body will be inside the inside. scanner? Or? Oh, so okay. the rest of the body, the hands will be out. Outside. Okay. Either the um, person can touch the leg mm -hmm. and okay. uh, or the hand, so know the presence of them. Right. right. Okay. So doctor, now we spoke about the spine scanning and also the brain scanning. Yeah. Other than these two, are there any other types of scanning which you do for the body? Uh, yeah, certainly. Okay. Because uh, actually MRI, when mm -hmm. it is when, when it originates in mm -hmm. the past, it uh, was limited to the CNS, like I said, the brain and the spine. Mm -hmm. That would that are the easiest in, uh, mm -hmm. region to be imaged. But uh, with all new advanced techniques and the coils, we can image any part of the body, mm -hmm. like the liver, if you want to um, diagnose any liver masses, liver parenchymal diseases, like you say, cirrhosis, okay. and the kidneys, the prostate, ovaries and the womb mm -hmm. everything like in part by part you can image you can yeah right so i think it's now time to take a break out of this interesting conversation about radiology and mri scans so let's be back after a short break this program is sponsored by lanka hospitals caring curing welcome after the break so today we are in conversation with Dr. Eranga Pereira, consultant radiologist and what we are talking of today is about the advantages of MRI scan. Before the break we were talking about the other types of scans other than the spine and the brain. So Dr. coming back into the conversation you mentioned that other than the spine and the brain scanning there are other types of scanning which can be done to the body parts such mm -hmm. as the liver, kidney. Mm -hmm. um, so just to go in detail for all of these, how do you really take us through this process of scanning in MRI. Okay. I'll give you an uh, example, then it is more easy to understand. Sure, sure. Uh, so if you take a patient with cirrhosis, mm -hmm. like uh, 
that is we call the chronic parenchymal disease, mm -hmm. right? So it can come in a patient like a male or female mm -hmm. or a child. Mm -hmm. It's a common thing. So they have found that new technology uh, that is uh, to enhance the masses in the cirrhotic liver. Mm -hmm. Cirrhotic liver, and now we have found that so with so many researchers, it is it has a tendency to develop go through uh, uh, developing cancer, right. uh, what you call a hepatocellular carcinoma. Mm -hmm. So they start with minute one and then it grows in size. Mm -hmm. So earlier you detect the better. So we advise the people who have cirrhosis to get a scan done regularly. Mm -hmm. There are some blood investigations, tumor markers that you do parallel with the MRI imaging. Mm -hmm. So they have done research and shown that MRI is very sensitive because it has some like um, diffusion, mm -hmm. it has some imaging uh, sequences where it is very specific mm -hmm. and very sensitive. All right. You compare with the other imaging modalities like mm -hmm. CT also. Even if you do those two, like you end up doing an MR. Mm -hmm. So it has a very high soft tissue clarity. That is why I say soft tissue clarity is highest in the MRI. All right. So the minute one, like less than one centimeter, you can better detect in MRI. Mm -hmm. So that's one example. And the other one is like uh, prostate cancer okay. in men are becoming very common. Mm -hmm. And in the West, they use this MRI scanner to screen mm -hmm. and the same way like the liver, mm -hmm. uh, you do some parallel blood test. Mm -hmm. And when some markers are high with parallel blood, you can do MRI. We call it like multi-paracentric imaging. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of, I, like I told you, other than not like the other scanners, you do a lot of sequences at once. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. gather information from all the sequences, mm -hmm. all the like diffusion, you give contrast and you get the kinetic curve mm -hmm. and you take everything and you give a mark <coughs> and the highest the mark value, mm -hmm. higher the suspicion for the cancer. So it's very, it has proven very, very valuable, uh, this thing in diagnosing prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So in the breast, same way they have developed a new coil for breast and that also you have multi-paracentric imaging. Mm -hmm. So if you have a tumor or mass in the breast, the characterization is higher in MRI. Mm -hmm. So with the mammogram, ultrasound, you do MRI as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, like that in kidneys, if you have a tumor, like if you can't go through a CT scanner because mm -hmm. you are allergic to contrast or your um, renal functions are not good, that time you can do a, a MRI mm -hmm. to characterize the tumor. So like that, there are so many organs like uh, soft tissue clarity is good mm -hmm. in MR. So you end up doing an MR for better mm -hmm. uh, clarification. So what I gathered from your information is, Doctor, through MRI scan, all of these minute details of injuries can be identified yeah, in a very yeah, effective manner, yeah. is it? In yes. certain organs, mm -hmm. like I would uh, mention like the organs which are subjected to move, like mm -hmm. the lungs, we do not image from the MR because in MRI scan you have to be very still. Mm -hmm. Slightest movement uh, will not give you good imaging. Okay. That will give you an artifact. Mm -hmm. So all this liver, prostate, kidneys, they are not subjected to move with the respiration or heart. Right. So they give better imaging. Mm -hmm. So it does wonders. <laughs> so moving on, doctor, let's talk about the sports injuries. How often do you get um, investigations in sports it's injuries? It's very common. It it's getting, getting very it? common. Ah, yes. Right, okay. Uh, people are engaged in so many sports activities now. This, yes. uh, they are becoming mm. very conscious about the health, yeah. and, <laughs> and in schools also there are a lot of sports-related uh, activities. Mm. So the best advantage, like best uh, thing in MR, is like it has, doesn't have, like I told you, it doesn't have radiation. So the pediatric, like the kids, uh, the young generation can be exposed mm -hmm. without uh, a harm. Mm -hmm. That is the main advantage in sports-related injuries. Mm -hmm. 
other thing is uh, the best soft tissue clarity if I explain you what you mean by the soft tissue clarity like if you take a joint any sports related in injury in the our body mm -hmm. it will have a board it will have muscle it will have tendons mm -hmm. like it's from hard to the soft more soft so this will give you a nice image in the MRI like right. it a will very have clear image very clear imaging uh, you don't not, you don't get that kind of image in any scan, scan. Okay. you can identify muscles separately you can identify the tendons separately mm -hmm. the bone separately and the tiniest tear you have in the muscle a tendon mm -hmm. you can identify you can pick it up right and like I said, like if you have the MRI scan alone, it will not help you. You have to have coils for each of these uh, joint in the, the body. body parts. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of scan uh, coils. We have uh, coils separately for the shoulder, uh, separately for the knee, mm -hmm. ankle, wrist, and the thumb, uh, the, the, the fingers. Fingers also. So like you have, you can have tendon ruptures like when you are playing um, badminton mm -hmm. or some uh, small tendons. So we have a very micro coil where you can image only the tendons in one finger. Mm -hmm. So um, we ha get a lot of cases. Yeah, uh, sports injuries. Yeah, sports related injuries. Okay. When talking about that, I'm sure the public has a question, doctor, as what is the age group? Is there any age group for this MRI scanning or do you advise it to any type of age? If you just talk about the age of people? No, there is no age group uh, like uh, yeah. it, it, if we get a request from a clinician, mm -hmm. we have performed like uh, scans for a baby of few days old, like three days mm -hmm. old and probably the age goes up to something like 90 years. Mm -hmm. You can image any any person. Only problem like uh, in the pediatric, like younger, like the babies, Infantil. you have to keep them um, still. So for that we sedate uh, mm -hmm. and then we perform because they will not stay still for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing that you have to do in MRI for the infants. But there's no definite age group. It applies to it all. It applies. With you can no just, harm, yeah. you can undergo the yeah, MRI yeah. scan. Okay. So along with that, doctor, now we spoke how it is not harmful, and MRI has been evolving throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this technology advancement of uh, MRI scanning. How yeah. has it? How has it come? Yeah. If I say like uh, the MRI started like to see the picture. We see an organ, and we uh, when it is disease. We say that it is a cancer, it is a harmless tumor, mm -hmm. it is not a tumor, it is just an injury. Mm -hmm. That is looking at the morphology, like the picture of the organ. So it has developed, it has gone through so many generations and it has come to a point where you uh, try to understand the function of an organ. All right. Uh, okay. So we call it functional imaging. Mm -hmm. I explain you in the brain, like you can pinpoint where my finger is working and uh, if I work it and if I move my finger and you do the scan and you get the point where it is mm -hmm. uh, involved in the brain. Mm -hmm. So that is functional mm -hmm. imaging. And the same way they have developed uh, methods to show the metabolic activity. Mm -hmm. That is uh, uh, part of the like tumor doesn't have the normal metabolite content like the normal tissue if you mm -hmm. take the prostate the rest of the prostate uh, metabolite composition is different from the tumor part All right. so there is a uh, image uh, acquisition we call it spectroscopy mm -hmm. like the diffusion yes it's a separate <laughs> sequence you say it's spectroscopy so mm -hmm. you evaluate the whole prostate its chemical comp composition mm -hmm. so uh, where the part is where the tumor is you identify the composition is different, mm -hmm. gives a uh, pathological peak, mm -hmm. that is the metabolic. So then now we are coming to the molecular 
advanced uh, tech means we all, I mean, we don't use that in Sri Lanka. We are not that uh, gone to that far. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sure Lanka hospitals will be bringing you the best of technology with the time to come as well in all types of uh, medical services. Uh, along with that, doctor, let's talk about how will you advise the public out there? Mm -hmm. How will people know that they have to undergo an MRI scan? Uh, if you just talk about it. Yeah, um, I would suggest like if you have some kind of a problem, mm -hmm. whether it is related to brain or limbs or your tummy mm -hmm. or the chest, you first you should visit a clinician, mm -hmm. a physician or a neurosurgeon, neurologist or whoever, the first visit a, a clinician, then he would uh, uh, examine you examine you and would say which region to be image that mm -hmm. is very important i we should know which region to be image so then he would give me an idea mm -hmm. this is the region this is what to look for mm -hmm. so that is the first step i think you should do as a go see a clinician yeah. and then from there onwards you will yeah. be advised to go for an MRI scan and then that's the time you come and meet a radiologist. Am I correct <laughs> doctor? Yeah. Yes. So I think we had a very good conversation today on the importance and the advantagement of an MRI scan with uh, Dr. Eranga Pereira. So thank you so much doctor for joining with Art Television today. Much. I think thank that you. was a very productive conversation where you got to know that there's actually nothing to be worried about undergoing an MRI scan and there is no age differentiation. Even the newborn baby to 90 year, 90 year old person can undergo an MRI scan very safely with all the technological advance, advancements which have occurred in the um, time to come and definitely in future as well. With that, we are wrapping up today's Art Mediline. Thank you for joining with us. I'm sure you gathered a lot of knowledge. See you next week again through Art Mediline. Thank you so much. Lanka Hospitals. Caring. Curing.